Jeff Anderson here with Super Fast Flooring Products. What I have in my hand is our Rich Flex line. This product is made 50% of vinyl and 50% limestone. The limestone gives this product rigid, the rigidness for easy installation. It also allows temperatures to get down all the way to zero and expand all the way up to 140 without hurting the product at all. The product is waterproof, so in a bathroom area, we know that this product is not going to expand or contract. It doesn't absorb water. So with that being said, we're going to be installing this in an area to where we can place stuff on top of it, which is great because it's so hard to cut around the toilet. We're going to lift the toilet out just like we did here, and we're going to put the toilet right back on top of this product with a clean line. So let's start. So we decided to install this flooring left to right coming into the bathroom. As you can see, the toilet is going to be towards the end of our installation. Very first piece has to be started from the left side of the room and we're going to have to get this to be butted right up to that threshold. So we're going to have to do a first piece that we're going to have to do on this product is we're going to have to cut it. The cut has to be made here so this can slide all the way up to the threshold. We can do two things, one of two things. We can just cut around this casing or we can do what we call an undercut and slide the plank under the casing to give it a more uniform look. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and figure out how we're going to go ahead and cut this casing. And then we're gonna measure this out and we're gonna be able to slide it in and butt it right up to this threshold. So what you want to do is you want to undercut. So basically, you set this tray. Chisel everything out and the plank will slide right underneath the casing. So what we're going to do is go ahead and measure this expansion and it is sitting right at one inch. So we're going to go ahead and cut this piece out over here one inch so this will slide under. So we're going to go ahead and measure this out one inch. One inch. So now that we've drawn our line, we're going to go ahead and get a straight edge and go ahead and score it to our or mark lines and we're going to come exactly one inch and we're going to take this and score it exactly one inch So now that we've got this slit underneath the casing, our second piece is going to go right here. It also has to be notched out one inch for the other side of the casing. Put them together and then we'll just slide it right in. Now that we've got this notched out, we're going to have to connect the two pieces together. So let's just go ahead and line it up. And 
And since this flooring doesn't have to click from side to side, we call this what is called a tap down. And all we have to do is tap this, and this becomes one solid piece, and then we just slide this into place. And then we'll have a quarter round that'll cover that gap right there. So now that we've cut the two pieces, slid it under the uh, casing after we did the undercut, what I like to do is just cut a little piece here and, and make sure that the two pieces that are joined together as your first run are lined up and that all the seams are nicely snug. Something else I like to do at this point, uh, after I do my first run, just, just to make sure that every look, everything looks correct, I went ahead and cut my quarter round for this transition here between the plank and the threshold. That'll give it a nice smooth step down to the flooring. All right, so we're on to the second row. The first row is nicely set. We know that it's nicely perpendicular and all the click mechanism has engaged. So we're gonna go left to right, get our first piece. We're gonna go ahead and install that first piece. Should be a pretty easy click. There it goes. I'm gonna take our second piece. I went ahead and cut the second piece to conform to the tub that's on the right hand side. We're gonna go ahead and just slide that in. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing underneath. mechanism in place and we're just trying to make sure that all the lines are nice and tight before we do the actual tap there we go and once again the edge here just needs to be tapped, tapped in the play And it looks good. All right, we're on to row three. We're just gonna take a full plank. Once again, it's left to right. And we just wanna make sure that the, the lines are nice and even. And this should just, should just easily flow into place. And the lines are nice and even. So the second piece, of course, we're gonna align to this tub here. And we're gonna have to do a quick measurement and then we'll go and cut it. So our measurement to the tub, to the center line here is 20 and 5 eighths. And we know that we want the tongue on the outside. So we're gonna measure this way on the surface, 20 and 5 eighths, which brings us to about right here. Then we're gonna take a nice square, line it up on that mark, open up our knife. And all we want to do is just score it one time. One score is all you need. Pull the knife back up. The score is here. And it's just a quick pop that breaks the board. And we know that this side is going to lay right on top of that tongue that's extruding on that plank. And then we're going to tap it down. All right, we're finally down to uh, the section where we're gonna be cutting around where the toilet hole is. Um, so the first thing we wanna do, I just wanna let you know that this flange, we need to make sure that this flange is e either even with the floor or just a hair above it. What we don't want is the flange to be below the surface of the flooring. But we're right now we're looking at this flange and it looks like it's about a quarter of an inch on, on one side and it's not as level as I like it to be, but it's okay. We'll work around it. Um, if the flange uh, is lower than the flooring itself, they sell these little spacers, and there's different thicknesses. This is one eighth of an inch, excuse me, one quarter of an inch. This is about a three eighths or half inch, and you can stack these and build this flange up to the level of the floor. But it looks like this is going to be just perfect. But what we'll use is these as a tracer uh, for the flooring. So let's just take this and we're gonna line up where we're about to, to install this next section of plank. 
and we'll go ahead and that, line that up, and we're going to go ahead and just lay it over the current flange. Now that we've laid this, we've laid this plank over the current flange, we want to use this extra piece here and just sort of put it right over the existing flange as a guide, and we're going to use this as a tracer, and we're going to just trace a circle right over the top of the plank, fold it back, and now we'll know where to cut. Okay, we're back here now. Uh, I went ahead and, and cut the circle out of the plank with the jigsaw, but if, if you don't have a jigsaw, that's okay. You can take that knife and score it. It, it, it might not as be as clean as this cut with a jigsaw, but you can score it. It doesn't have to be that beautiful because it's going to be hidden underneath the, uh, the toilet. So I got that, that circle cut out with the jigsaw. And what I'm going to do next, just to ensure that this is set in, in place and there's not any holes around this flange, we're going to take uh, some silicone, just clear silicone. I like to use silicone because it doesn't damage the plank. It also puts a good seal around all the things that you're working on. So we're just going to put some in here. Fill these holes up around this flange. Now we're going to take the plank, make sure it slides into the grooves, make sure you get a nice insert into the seam and we're just gonna let it sit there there we go now we're down to our next section of the plank uh, we've got to do two cuts here we've got a supply line coming out of the floor and we've got the flange that we need to work around um, since the flange is going to be on the back side of the toilet we're going to deal with the flange first so what I want to do is go ahead and line up the plank to where the flange is, and we're looking at the flange, and I want to make sure I, I, I go past the shutoff valve, because in order to click it, we have to lift it, and we have to pass that valve in order for it to lay down straight. So, uh, just to make sure we're going to clear it, I'm going to go ahead and mark this here, and I'm going to mark this here. So, we're going to cut out a section and completely just take it out so we can just work around the flange and then we'll silicone it back into place. Now that we've notched that piece out, it's easy to work around this flange. We're gonna go ahead and cut out our, uh, or draw our, our circle to cut out the rest of this plank. There we go. We'll go ahead and Cut this out with a circular saw or you know with a knife and just pop it and uh, we'll install this piece and we'll take care of that little corner in just a second. We're down to the last section. I went ahead and installed this plank. This little hole here, we're just going to put a little bit of silicone on it. There we go. And the piece that we cut out, we're going to put that little piece in. I'm going to reverse click it in here. There we go. And that piece is now in. Okay, we're going to set the toilet today. Um, you should be able to get a wax ring packet that comes with the wax ring and a couple of alignment bolts and bolts that's going to hold your toilet in place. Um, you want to go ahead and place your bolt, which I already did, on, on one side. The other side, I'm going to go ahead and place it now, but come, what comes with the bolt is a little plastic piece to hold this bolt upright. So you hold the bolt, slide it up and down, and basically it'll hold it in place for you. Just like that. And what you want to do is these bolts need to be aligned the same distance off the wall. That is 10 and a half, and that is a little bit less than 10 and a half. So, 
I'm going to set that one at 10 and a half. And that one right at 10 and a half. And it says 10 and 10. So now we have both of these bolts that are evenly displaced against that wall. You want to make sure that the plug that you have in here, which helps keeps the smell out, gets unclogged, and there's nothing in the way of the actual drain. I'm going to go ahead and get the wax ring. set it nice and straight so it's nice and even. There we go. And we're about ready to set the toilet. What I like to do is lift this thing around. See that hole that's right there? That hole is going to go right where that hole is. And what I usually do is just I just set it in place and go right over it and ensure that my bolts line right up with the toilet on both sides and it's just going to go into place. There we go. And now the toilet. And before yeah. I do anything else, I'm just going to get some water and just test the toilet. Make sure there's no leaks. Let's go ahead and get one more gallon. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and put these bolts in. A little washer. A little washer on both sides. And we're just going to easily bolt this together. So, put the toilet in. I would take a wrench and just Slightly tighten these and you can hold this here so it won't twist. And you don't want to over tighten this thing because this is ceramic and it'll, it'll break. But have it pretty snug to where the toilet won't move. Do it on both sides. And the toilet should be in stationary in place. <clears throat> what I like to do in addition to this, do it with all the toilets, because sometimes the floor can be a little uneven. So I always take a, a tube of clear silicone and I'll caulk all the way around it, just a little cushion for the toilet. 